Today we are going to be adding compound ore that's gonna be on page 44. Okay, we have two pieces then that we need to put in here. Okay, we need to do our table over here on the left-hand side. So you need to cut this out along the dashed lines. Okay, you'll even cut out part of a table up here. So follow that dashed line. Okay, and then glue that in. And then your example page over here on the right. So pause if you need time to get those put into your notebooks. Okay, when we are talking about compound inequalities, okay, the word compound means more than one. Okay, so we know when we're looking about this, we are talking about more than one. Okay, so we're gonna have more than one inequality and it is going to be attached together using the word or. Mm -hmm. And we can talk about these by graphing them, solving them and writing them. So we're gonna look at these options. Okay, so if we look at this example here, right, we have two inequalities. We have more than one, and they are attached with the word or. That tells us two things of information that both pertain to the same variable. X can be less than negative four, or it can be greater than or equal to three. When we graph a compound inequality, you only need to have two numbers on your number line. Okay, and on your left, you are always going to put the smaller number. So negative four is smaller, so it's gonna go on the left. It's not always the number on the left that goes on the left. So just make sure you pay attention to that. Okay, and the larger number on the right, because on number lines, right, smaller numbers are on the left, larger numbers are on the right. Now, it's gonna keep, seem kind of goofy at first, but there is a reason why we do this. We want to graph each of these inequalities following the rules that we learned originally. So if you forget how to graph inequalities, let me see what page it's on, right? We'd have to look up here in our table of contents. Okay, but when we first talked about our inequalities, that was on page 18. So if you need to go back to page 18 to remind you how to graph, you could do that. Okay. So I'm gonna graph according to our normal rules. So this has an open circle at negative four because there's no line underneath it. And it tells me I want to shade to the left. Now notice I'm graphing above the number line, not on the number line. Okay, then for X is greater than or equal to three, it is or equal to, so it gets a solid circle. Okay, greater than tells me to go to the right. Now, when we are using the word or, the word or means we get one or we get the other. We don't need both of them to be happening. So we're gonna copy down onto the number line anywhere where we see at least one. Okay, so if you sort of think about the number line in three different sections, one group over here, one in the middle, and one over here, we want to look and see, is there at least one thing being graphed to the left of negative four? Yes. So I'm going to bring that down on my number line. Is there at least one thing happening in the middle? Nope. So nothing gets graphed there. Is there at least one happening to the right? Yes. So that gets graphed there. And then my students often say, Mrs. McKinney, I just brought the same thing down. Well, that happens sometimes, but not all the time which is why we're doing this process. Especially as we go into tomorrow, it will be even more important. Okay, now we could do this in reverse order. So we could be given the number line and we wanna turn this into a graph, right? So when we're looking at this, we clearly have two separate sections that this is happening. When we see these two separate sections, we know we are talking about an or. Okay, one option, we can pick the variable, it doesn't give it to us, so maybe we pick y. Okay, it's using an open circle, which means it's a less than or a greater than, not an or equal to. And it is shaded to the left. Left is less than. Okay, so we know that we want to have a less than. If you really truly forget your rules, make yourself a cheat sheet over here, right? We use an open circle if we have 
a less than or a greater than, right? We use that solid circle if it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. Okay, we are going to shade right any time that it's greater than or greater than or equal to. And we shade left any time it's less than or less than or equal to. Okay, so if you need that cheat sheet, you could put that over there. Okay, so this is shading to the right and it's a solid circle. No new variable, we have to pick the same one because it's on the same number line. So this is an or equal to, and it's shading to the right. So y is greater than or equal to 25. Okay, if we look at our next one, we can also solve with compound inequalities. The good news is solving with compound inequalities is really straightforward. It's just solving two separate inequalities within one problem. Okay, so we just solve these as if they're two separate things. So if I solve this one first, c over 5 plus 8 is less than or equal to 6, right? So I'm just looking at this one. I'll undo adding 8 by subtracting 8. And then I'll undo division with multiplication. Okay, then I'll forget that that one's even there and I'll look at my other one. Right? This is all part of the fraction, so on this one I need to multiply by the 6 first. So C minus 3 is greater than 30. Then we'll undo subtracting 3 by adding 3. Okay, so if we go to put this on our number line down here, right, we said the smaller number is going to go on the left and the larger number on the right. So if I graph these both above, solid circle at 10, shaded to the left. If I graph this one up above, open circle at 33, shaded to the right. And then I'm bringing anything down where I see at least one. So over here in this section to the left of 10, do I see at least one? Yes, so it comes down on my number line. Do I see at least one in the middle? Nope, so nothing there. At least one on the right? Yes, so I'm shading there. So that is our final solution for this. C is less than or equal to 10, or, or, that should have the word or in there, or C is greater than 33, and then this is what the graph looks like on the number line. Okay, but the graphs don't always look like this. So if we look at this problem, Okay, let's solve this. So first, let's solve the one on the left. So if we solve the one on the left, we're gonna subtract five first. That will leave us with a negative W is greater than negative two. We still have that negative left, so we have to divide by that negative one. And remember, if we divide by a negative, we have to flip that inequality sign. And then we'll do the right-hand side. Right, we're multiplying by negative three-fourths, so now I'm gonna divide by negative three-fourths. I'm dividing by a negative, so again, I'm flipping that inequality sign. Let's see, nine. That's gonna give us a negative 12. So now when I go to put this on my number line, Right, be careful with where we write things. Our negative 12 is the small one. Our two is the larger one. Okay, so if we graph above, we need an open circle at two and we're shading to the left. A solid circle at negative 12 and we're shading to the right. Okay, so on our number line, is at least one happening over here? Yep, so I'm gonna copy that down. Is at least one happening in the middle? Yep, so I'm gonna copy that down. Is at least one happening to the right? Yes, and even this open circle gets filled in because it's shaded up above. So really all we are doing is shading this entire number line. And when we shade that entire number line, that really tells us that our answer 
It is all real numbers. Okay. Our last option is that we can write compound inequalities. So very similar to using those key terms that we talked about um, with what represent inequality symbols, right? Is at most, is at least, is no more than, right? We still need to be pulling from that information. Okay, so it can be very straightforward. A number is greater than seven or, so it's telling us it's an or problem, at most negative five. So we know for a number, we're writing down a variable. Is greater than, I'm gonna write my greater than symbol, seven, or, so I'm writing word, at most negative five. So I have to repeat, right? When we attach a sentence together with or, it means that this first part of it is going to each of them. So or a number is at most negative five. So at most negative five, right? If you don't remember those key terms, you could just flip to your notes from yesterday is at most tells us less than or equal to. You need to add chemicals to a swimming pool if the pH is below 7.2 or above 7.6. We want to write an inequality that represents when chemicals need to be added to the pool. Okay, so we need to add chemicals if the pH is below 7.2. Not if it's 7.2, if it's below 7.2. So that would be less than, or, right, it even nicely tells that, if the pH is above, not if it's equal to, but if it's above 7.6, right? So that would be our inequality there. Okay, so if we look over here, we're not gonna necessarily do every one, but we're gonna talk through, um, at least make sure we're good up for the most part. Okay, identify the solution set from the given graph. So we have these split up. We know less than with an open circle, we can pick the variable. So maybe we say X is less than negative seven or, right, there's two separate ones. X is greater than 22. Okay, if we wanna solve this one over here, that means we're solving them both separately. So first, I'm going to look at this first one and solve it. It'll be negative 35. So x is going to be less than or equal to negative 7. Then we're going to solve our second one. So x over 4 is greater than 13. Multiply times four, we'll multiply times four. See, there'll be 52. Okay, so when we go to put this on the number line, we'll have negative seven on the left and 52 on the right. So a filled in circle at negative seven shaded to the left. An open circle at 52 shaded to the right. So if we bring down anywhere we see at least one, it's here and here. So I want you to do these two on your own. If we were in class, we'd be doing them in class. So you do those two on your own. Okay, our next one, we're gonna write, solve, and graph. Okay, so nine less than a number. So if we have nine less than a number, we know that less than isn't is less than, it tells nine less than a number. So that is a number minus nine. Is no more than. Okay, so is no more than. If it is no more than, then that's gonna be a um, less than or equal to eight. It should be or, that will be right on your copy, <laughs> nine less than a number is no less than 
three. Okay, so if we solve this, So on our number line, we know our smaller number is 17. Oh, 12, 12, our smaller number is 12. Our larger number is 17. So if we graph these both above, solid circle at 17, shaded to the left. Solid circle at 12, shaded to the right. Okay, well, anywhere that we see at least one of those happening, right, is going to be this entire number line. So this one's gonna be in all real numbers. Okay, our last one, WHS Athletics has a policy for outdoor practices. Okay, WHS Athletic teams are not allowed to practice outside if the temperatures are below 32 degrees nor are they allowed to practice outside if the temperatures are above 100 degrees. So we're gonna write an inequality that represents that and then we are going to graph it. Okay, so we know if the temperature is below 32, so I'm just gonna pick a variable. If it's below then, right, it's less than 32. Or the other situation is if the temperature is above 100 degrees. So 32 is smaller, 100 is larger. Open into the left, open into the right, and then anywhere we see one of them. So we see at least one of them here, and at least one of them here. 